<clears throat> Heritage apple, pink pearl with comfrey, beginning of a fruit tree guild. <clears throat> this kind of apple, when you cut it open, the flesh is red. It's quite beautiful. And, oh. Behind these rickety sticks are um, newly replanted and better soil asparagus roots that <clears throat> I thought had died and uh, dug them up to plant some yacon, but uh, found the roots just starting to send out little buds. So I amended the soil and put in, put them back in, and I'm pretty sure they'll make it. Um, let's see. Oh, here is yacon. I just got this from uh, Nicole's garden. Thank you so much, Nicole. This one won't be planted, but another is. Um, here we have a little fig tree I planted when I first moved in. And rosemary for the bees right here. I believe they love purple and blues. So when I moved in, I wanted to plant a lot of purples and blues for the bees. So rosemary and Spanish lavender and over here, I think they're called um, blue-eyed grass. And I took just a little bit, it's a native plant. Took a little nodule and um, transplanted it. Oh, they're so pretty. This beauty I don't know the name of, but it's uh, four bees. This is, I think, creeping, no, woolly thyme and um, chamomile for the bees. This beauty is mullen and it is um, Actually, I found out this particular one that has the bigger leaves. You can see how big they are. Um, is actually a non-native. The native mullen is uh, smaller leaves. It has smaller leaves. But in any case, this is a wonderful wild plant. It is reseeded all along my pathway. And you can harvest it and dry it, and you will have uh, something that will make a great tea for your intestines, intestinal health, and for your lungs. Continuing along with our medicine chest, this is Happy Heart, or Lemon Balm. And it's really wonderful for um, if you are sleepless or nervous, you can make a tea out of that. I had a lovely ritual of um, during a, a long bout of sleeplessness due to worry. I would come out in the middle of the night and harvest some of this and make tea, light a candle, hit my Tibetan singing bell, and... Um, that would do the trick. It's wonderful. And it also reseeds and travels quite a bit, so beware. I think you know what this is. 
I've been able to come out and harvest um, some asparagus just about every day for about three weeks now. And this is asparagus gone to fern. I don't know if you can really see it, but it will grow up to be quite tall and feathery and it will fill in the space so beautifully. And it makes the roots very strong. Continuing along over here, don't know the name of this new beauty, but this is from, um, well, let's see, it's for the butterflies and hummingbirds. And it's quite lovely, it'll grow into a bush. This is the beautiful yarrow, very good for liver health, poultices. I think you can make tea out of it, I'm not sure. It's a native. Here's the little seed pod. Hmm, not showing up well, there we go. So I've tried to scatter it around. And let's see, what else? This is a salvia. Um, and you can tell a salvia or a mint family plant by the square stems. So they're kind of neat. If you see mint, go ahead and feel the stems. They are square, four-sided. And that's lovely for the bees. And let's see. This little prickly fella. Not too many prickles. Apparently this is a thornless raspberry. No leaves on this one yet, but I can show you. Here it's traveled, and so um, in its second generation, it grows thorns. So don't pay a whole lot for thornless raspberry. You're gonna get them anyways down the line. This is pomegranate. Let's see, there we go. Oh, here's that bee plant, and I'm sorry I don't know the name, but there's a beautiful um, book called Blossoms and Bees, California Blossoms and Bees, I believe, and it will outline what plants are good to grow for bees. Here's one, purpley cyanothus, ground cover, our bee just flew by. Yesterday I saw mason bees. They're solitary, little zippy, fast bees. And I put up a bee house for the solitary bees to lay their eggs in last year, and I think, I think it's working. My lemon tree is finally a little more vibrant than it was for about three years. When I put it in the ground, and for about three years thereafter, it just looked like Charlie Brown's Christmas tree. Very sad and barely alive. And then I started pouring my coffee grounds on it, and hallelujah, it came back to life. And that also happened with... That's my little... Well, the sun came out and I can't see very well now. <laughs> but um, here we have parsley. And this beauty right here is um, blueberry. And that also came back to life with coffee grounds. I lost four other blueberry plants. Um, Over the years, here I'm just going to pan around a little bit. This is a pear tree, and it's got a number of bees in it right now. Oh, yay! That's why I took out my lawn and built good soil and put in a 3D garden for the bees. My good friend Beth Whitman says, 
when I look out the window, I want to look out, I don't want to see flat, I want to see tall. I want to see an ecosystem. Um, and so, I thought that was brilliant. And it's true, you take out the lawn and you put in these beautiful things and the life will come. Oh, another bee. This is comfrey and it's growing at the base of the pear. And these are walking Egyptian onions right here. Let's see, and I can show you what happens. They will put out their seeds at the top and then they get heavy headed. The stem grows up tall, the top falls over. And if you leave it alone, it will plant itself in a, in a walking fashion. It'll march across your garden. It's pretty amazing. Another salvia for the bees. Oh, and the lovely fava. Fava beans are planted quite frequently by gardeners to put nitrogen back in the soil. And if you want to use it in that way, you need to cut it down and chop it up into the soil before it flowers. But as you can see, this is flowered and these flowers um, are edible and the leaves are edible. And then the fava beans are definitely edible, but they are labor intensive. You have to do a lot of work to get through two cases to access the beans. But boy, if you find a good recipe, they are worth it. And honey, I think it's all about growing your own food nowadays. I think that would be really good. Food security. Um, another square stemmed mint. It's kind of taken over. You gotta manage it. Here's the bee. Oh, you know, they don't sit still for long. Um, over here, more happy heart and wild strawberries, California native. What am I looking at? Yesterday I tried to make a video without glasses and I had no idea what I was showing you. So here are the wild strawberries. They take over, but they also provide food. So, you know, if you can spend time in your garden, it's good. You can kind of try to regulate these plants that send out their runners where you don't want them to. And then gather some lovely fruit, which is going to come after the flowers, you know. And more woolly thyme. And Munmani, that's the Maidu word for, um, <gasps> there's a mason bee. Oh, can I find him on the video? He's right above. Oh, God, they're gorgeous. Osmia. Oh, do you hear the other bee? That's a honeybee on the flowers. <sighs> it's got big pollen pockets. When the sun comes out, I can't see what's on my phone screen, so forgive me if I'm filming nothing. Oregano, good for the bees. This little tree is a honey crisp apple, and it is so good. Sorrel, it's like a lemony plant. One time in a nice restaurant in Berkeley, I had a Vichy Soa made of sorrel. I have no idea how to make it, but I'm going to do that soon since I'm staying at home. Okay, here's your quiz. What is this plant? Did you guess? Egyptian walking onion. Woohoo! And then here's my chard. Boy, I've got to get that harvested. and fava beans and there were sweet peas back in here but I kind of over planted not sweet peas what are they sugar snap peas there they are 
So you can see, I don't know, it might not be the best growing environment, but I've got sugar snap peas growing up the rosemary. And um, it's a little crowded in here, but you can plant pretty darn densely. Okay, so um, back to this munmini. It's actually mugwort in English, but all I ever think of is the Maidu name. It's medicine. It is what you use to um, make moxie sticks or the Chinese medicine that is good for so many things. Um, it also can be used as a smudge. If you dry it and try to burn it, it doesn't burn very well, just as dried leaves. But if you take out the, um, if you rub the leaves in your hand when they've dried, their little sticks will poke you. But what you'll end up with is this little kind of ball of fuzz and uh, that burns so hot and so long. I nearly cracked open an abalone shell one time um, when I set a burning piece of mugwort fuzz on it. It's fabulous. So, um, this is growing a little bit bigger than I want it to be, but it's fennel. And you can eat the root here, and it will really um, also take over, but it's fabulous. It's such a good plant, and the ladybugs love it. And the ladybugs will eat your aphids. So the garden gives and gives. This is all parsley I came from seeds. I let a plant go to seed and um, I just scattered it around so I eat that a lot. Purple is a wallflower just for fun and here you can see the garden in its entirety a little bit more. Thank you for taking the time to come on my virtual garden tour. Get your fingers in the dirt y'all. It's medicine. It is medicine for the heart and soul and body. Go well, stay well.